my brothers, my sisters, when things happen in our lives, generally we react to these things in a specific way. A lot of the times this way, the way we react to things that happen to us, is connected to our upbringing. It's connected to the programming of the hard drive that we have, the brain. So as something happens, we react based on how we were taught to react. Now, for your information, the best of creation, the most noble of all messengers, we believe very firmly is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no doubt. We believe that the greatest gift that Allah has bestowed upon us is something known as Iman. Iman meaning, I believe in Allah, I believe in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I utter the shahada, la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final messenger. And that means I will follow the system and the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there are so many occasions in the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where things have happened and he reacted in a way that we would not react if we were faced with the same. Why? Sometimes because we lack that education, we don't know. Sometimes because we know, but we claim that we're not prophets which is actually something weak. The reason is, yes, we are not prophets, but we cannot use that statement to justify the distance between us and the method of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have to make sure that we are as close as possible. And sometimes we know it. We are educated. We understand the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's reactions. We know we should be reacting in a similar way, but we are not bothered. We're too lazy or we just feel like it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. I don't care. And that's the attitude we develop. Now, if you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us clearly about certain reactions, how to react under certain circumstances. For example, and there are many verses in the Quran. Allah says, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah is praising the one whom when calamity strikes, the first thing he does is he says or she says, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Relating not only everything to Allah, but his or her existence as well. And that of every one of us. When calamity strikes, musibah, musibah means a problem, something that got to you that was negative. It happened to you, but it was not a positive thing. The reaction, the first reaction of a true believer is, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We indeed belong to Allah, all of us, and we indeed shall all be returning to Allah. Allah is not only the most powerful, but we belong to him such that even if I were to come to a total end, I'm actually going back to Allah because that end is only connected to this worldly life, not to eternity. Can we ever as mu'mineen come to an end? Only in this world we can, but... It is not connected to this world alone for a believer. The true life is actually the life after death. Reason is on earth, we will only be living for 70 years on average. After that, you have to go. Where do you go? Back to Allah. Whether you had big problems or small problems, you still have to go back to Allah. And the fact that you went back to Allah, unfortunately, people who remain will consider that a problem. Subhanallah. They will consider it a big problem. Yet you might be floating in Jannah. May Allah make it easy for all of us to achieve that. You might be in a far more beautiful place, but your children are crying. Your wife, I hope she is crying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. <laughs> May Allah bless every one of us. I hope the relationships are strong. We have to work on it. We have to work on it, my brothers and sisters, such that when we die, people miss us. It's a good sign. 
They remember us for good things. You know, when people remember you for a good thing, Allah says, وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِبْرَاهِيمٌ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِلْيَاسِينَ وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ مَا فِي الْآخِرِينَ سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ مُوسَىٰ وَهَارُونَ Allah speaks about the peace upon the messengers of Allah. And Allah says, we left after them a very, very good reputation and remembering on the tongues of those who were to come, including us. Today, when we say Ibrahim, what do we say? Do you just say Ibrahim? If I say Ibrahim came or Ibrahim did this, I would not be referring to the Prophet of Allah, but rather one Ibrahim from amongst us. If I'm referring to the Prophet, it is an insult to say his name without saying alayhi salam, may peace be on him. The same way the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, if I'm referring to the messenger, there is actually a curse upon the one who intentionally skips out sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Did you know that? If someone intentionally skips out sallallahu alayhi wasallam, there is a curse on that person. <coughs> so my brothers and sisters, it's extremely interesting for us to lead a life such that when we go, we also have a little bit of that gift. It will not be anywhere close to that of the messengers or even the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. When you say the name of any companion, you must add radiallahu anhum. No matter what happened between them, we have to say radiallahu anhum. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhum. Umar radiallahu an, Uthman radiallahu an. Why? That's a gift from Allah. Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ يُبَايِعُونَكَ تَحْتَ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah has become totally pleased with those who pledged allegiance with you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or to you under the tree. From amongst them were all these huge names, subhanallah, starting with Abu Bakr radiallahu an, Umar radiallahu an, Uthman radiallahu an, Ali radiallahu an. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. So we will never reach that rank, but at least if you led a good life, if you were connected to Allah and polite to the rest of the people, Allah will give you a good mention in those to come after you. Remember those two things. You need taqwa Allahi and you need husnul khuluqi. You need to be conscious of Allah. Develop your relation with Allah and then be polite to the rest of the people. What is stopping you from being polite? Even if a person is ugly, we're speaking today about the reaction. The reaction of what? Things that happen to us. Someone swears you. What's the reaction? Go back to the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Did he swear them back? No, never. He was not vulgar. The hadith says, the Prophet ﷺ was not vulgar, he was not abusive, he was not hurtful with the words he used. But what do we do? We're hurtful with the words we use. Not to those who hurt us, but to people who are innocent, who don't even deserve it, to our own family members, our children, our brothers and sisters, our parents at times, we use hurtful words, abusive words. Why? Not even as a reaction but as an action to begin with. May Allah forgive us. May Allah guide us. May Allah strengthen us. My brothers, my sisters, I plead with you to become more conscious of the way you use your tongue. Wallahi, it will solve a lot of your problems. When you die, people will remember you for the good words you used to utter. They will remember you because you made them feel good. You made them feel worthwhile. With us, those who are connected to us so closely, we make them feel unworthy. We make them feel totally useless. A'udhu Billah. It is a sign that we need reformation ourselves. Let's get back to that verse of the Quran where Allah says, when a calamity strikes, you are supposed to declare your closeness to Allah and confirm that you are going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember that. So that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us when a problem happens, it's not the end of the world. But even if it was the end of the world, who would you return to? To Allah. So you say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Nothing can be bad for a mu'min. There is another way that the Prophet sallallahu has taught us to react. You know, Abu Sufyan, before he was a Muslim, 
He was the leader of the Meccans, the Meccan army. And prior to him being a leader, he was one of the top leaders. But after the death of Abu Jahl, etc., he became the leader. He prepared an army to come back to attack Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Meccans had sent a huge army to come and attack. And the Mu'mineen were small in number, 313, small number. They were not even prepared with their own weapons. And what happened? The army had come forth and they were coming. Someone got to Muhammad sallallahu and told him that Abu Sufyan and them are coming. And this is the condition upon which they are coming, which means they're heavily armed. You know what? Allah mentions this in the Quran. Allah says, do you remember the time when the people came to the messenger وسلم, and told him that those people are coming? Those people are coming. You need to be scared of them. You need to fear them. You need to watch out for them. And what did the Prophet وسلم, do? What happened to the true believers? Allah says, it increased their conviction. It made them firm in their faith. And they said, Allah Allah is sufficient for us and he is the best disposer of our affairs. My brothers, my sisters, when Allah closes a door for you and a second door and a third door and a fourth door, it is because the fifth door will lead you to a place way beyond the first four doors. You have to be convinced. You tried something, Allah closed the door, you came out again. You tried something, Allah closed the second door. And the third, whether it was a marriage and you ended up divorced once, twice, thrice. Some of, some of the brothers and sisters, especially the sisters who've been divorced more than twice, they will tell you, I've given up. Now I'm not going to marry. Why? Perhaps the next man or the one after the next man will be such a lovely person that you'll forget about the other five characters that you were married to. Yes. But if you stop, that's where everything stops. You gave up, that's where your hope stops. You lost a job, a second one, a third. You applied one, they didn't accept it, they rejected it. One, two, three, four, five. I applied for 10 jobs. No one's giving me a job because Allah says, you know what? The 12th one is actually a mega, mega deal. Subhanallah. That's why we don't want you to get these 10. But after five, you're giving up. What's happening? You are doing something wrong. Don't react in that way. A reaction of giving up hope is not part of the dictionary of a mu'min. A believer does not give up hope. When something happens, you suffered a loss today, a loss tomorrow. One year, business is not going right. Two years, something is going wrong. For as long as you did not give up hope and you keep thanking Allah and you keep trying, trust me, five years later, that multi-million dollar deal that people were waiting. Notice I said dollars, not rands. That people were waiting for, subhanallah, came to you. But what happened the five years? You struggled. Suddenly you shot up to the top. That was Allah. Why? You reacted with hope. In the face of that, which would have brought about hopelessness to those who don't believe. Allahu Akbar. Allah is sufficient for me, for us, and He is the best disposer of our affairs. Allah says, the verse after that, what a beautiful verse. Allah says, as a result of that conviction that they had and the dua that they made, we actually converted for them whatever there was in terms of fear that they may have been or may have been warned about into a beautiful coolness, a calmness, success and victory. How did victory come? They reacted correctly. Let me give you another reaction in the Quran. You know, sometimes we hear some news. News is either good or bad. It's either about peace or about war. It's either about something positive or negative. Important pieces of news. How do we react? Let me tell you typically what we do. Someone says, you know what? There is, uh, okay, let me make it a bit interesting. Rather than saying something negative, you say, 
you desperately need butter, for example. Let's say ghee. Now, ghee, you know what ghee is, okay? Not many people know. So, you desperately need it, and someone tells you it's at one-tenth of the price at the store that is across the road. What, you, what, what are you going to do? A lot of people would start forwarding messages with a good heart, with a good heart. This, I'm giving you a very light example. With a good heart, you start forwarding messages. Mashallah, it's good. But the problem is if you need it, what you've got to do is make sure you've secured your one or two tins before everybody else gets it. So you start making a move. But if you're going to announce it before you've done anything about yourself, you might sit and say, guy, you know what? I needed it more desperately than everybody else. But they've all got it and I don't have it. Okay? That's a simple, light example. What would be the best thing to do? The best thing is make your plan and while you're doing that, you can let the rest know. There's a time to tell the people. There's a place to tell the people. I give you a more serious example. If there is a man with a gun out there and someone sees it, there are so many ways of reacting. He can either start screaming, yelling, and then this guy takes, what happens with a thief? You ask those who know. I think here in Cape Town, people know. When someone wants to hijack a vehicle from Gatesville, he is a fool. The reason is you can't come out of Gatesville. You're not going to get out of this place. And when that happens, do you know that he will start panicking? If he has a weapon, the thieves, a lot of the times they use these weapons when they start panicking. Okay? So if you're in the wrong place, wrong time, there's going to be crossfire. Do you understand what I'm saying? When a thief comes in, if he's armed, there's a different way of dealing with this. We are, we are fortunate we are from Africa. That's why we taught this drill. People who are hearing this lecture, living in other countries, might be saying, what is he talking about? But it's a fact. If a man is armed, you deal with him differently. Very different. You've got to make sure. He says, you say, look, take what you want. He says, look down, you look down. Look up, you look up. Things that you wouldn't even do in salah. Astaghfirullah. You know, a lot of us... When Allah says, do this, do that, we don't do it. But a thief with a gun says, do it, we did it. Khalas. On the ground, you're on the ground. But five salah, we're not on the ground. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. So, you know how to react because, or you should be. Because if you react wrongly, it's going to become dangerous. So, if you scream and the guy panics, there's a problem. Rather, you, can, you, you deal with the situation. You can let one or two people know, you know a certain uncle, you know someone else, you know, you know the security of the masjid. For example, there's always security in the masjids, mostly, you know, like we say, unmarked vehicles. There are unmarked security members that are here. A lot of you might know them, some of you might not know them, but they're there. So now what happens? Subhanallah, you deal with them in a beautiful way. The problem is solved. When people come out, they heard, you know, there was a guy who tried his luck, but he was dealt with. He was dealt with. Why? Because you dealt with it and you reacted in the correct way. So Allah speaks about this in the Quran. You know, the hypocrites, Allah says, when news of peace, security, or war, or uncertainty, lack of security comes to them. They broadcast it without thinking. They broadcast it. First thing they do, they let the whole world know. This is what happened. And Allah says, وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِي الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ Had they approached the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had they approached those with sound intellect, sound knowledge, with that piece of information, they would have known how to process that information and react as a result of what they heard or what they know. When you get news that is very important, you don't just broadcast it. When you get news that is serious, either way, whether it's good or bad, you don't just broadcast it. First, you ask yourself, what am I about to do? When you make a profit of a million rands, you don't broadcast it. People might become jealous. The thieves will know where to go because you broadcasted it. When you have a loss, sometimes you don't just broadcast it. Sometimes you might want to keep it within because you don't want to give an opportunity for those who dislike you to laugh and to become happy at your loss. It happens. That's why there is a dua. 
where we are taught to say, Oh Allah, do not let our enemies become happy at our loss. Subhanallah. Don't give our enemies a chance to laugh at us. That's a dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. So my brothers and sisters, to react, the Quran is telling you when something happens to you, you need to know how to react. Either inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, hasbunallahu wa ni'mal wakil, or you need to know whether or not to broadcast that news and how and to who. Now I get to one serious matter that came to me a few days ago, two, three days ago. So there are people who hate Islam. You know that. That hatred is based a lot of the times on ignorance. Ignorance. Because of that, they hate the Prophet ﷺ due to that ignorance. I'd like to put it at ignorance. I don't want to get it further because I've seen people who've hated and later on they became Muslim. Okay? So we don't want to say anything besides ignorance. They're ignorant. So one of the Dutch MPs, senior, senior guy in the political hierarchy, he decided to fire up something called draw a cartoon of Muhammad 2018 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? And the competition is on. A'udhu billah. May Allah protect us and may Allah guide everyone. What will it do to us? It is provoking us. That's what it is. Provocation. Someone telling you we're going to draw dirty cartoons and it's my right to do it. We tell them, my dear brother in humanity, you're making a mistake. You don't know the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa You don't know Islam. You're blaming a faith that has promoted peace over the centuries by looking at a few issues that have affected you and perhaps those around you and a few others. And you're blaming two billion people. And on top of that, the messenger, peace be upon him, who brought about a lot of the goodness that we have today from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm talking of as mankind. A lot of what we have today is taken from Islam. Whether you like it or not, you might be ignorant, but it actually is. So we say, my dear brother in humanity, we'd like you to rethink that position. You are inciting and provoking people to do that which nobody on earth wants and that is violence that is hatred that is enmity that is warfare we don't want it the muslims are being killed more than anything else take a look at the millions that have been killed within the last 12 years 15 years who killed them go back and check may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us may allah strengthen us as an ummah may allah grant us wisdom so the reaction, how should it be? They will keep on drawing their cartoons, but I want you to consider something. When they harmed Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in ta'if and in his life, in his person, he reacted with a beautiful dua. He reacted in a calm way. As a result, they turned to Islam wholesale. I guarantee you, my brothers and sisters, from this pulpit of Friday, here in Masjid Al-Quds in Cape Town, I want to tell you every time they have drawn cartoons or come out with blasphemous videos, scores of people have turned to Islam as a direct result of what they did. I guarantee you that is what has happened and keeps on happening today it's very difficult to enter the fold of islam because it's difficult to be a muslim the way we're looked at with the eye of skepticism but there are people against all odds turning to islam because they saw a cartoon they saw a video they decided you know we know so many muslims let's go into it let's study so these videos and cartoons have actually made people want to look into the reality. When they went into the reality, they said, this is the truth. Wallahi, I know people personally, personally, not just one, but many, whom this has happened to. But when we react with hooliganism, we are now vindicating those who are saying Islam is a barbaric faith. 
Therefore, my call and my plea to you, my beloved brothers and sisters, from the bottom of my heart, I am telling you, when you see negativity, please react in the wise way. Ask yourself, how would Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam react? He would not make astaghfirullah. I don't even want to say it. He wouldn't do anything negative. So, yes, we are provoked. Yes, we will be upset. But be proactive. Use the opportunity to educate people. Give a little pamphlet. You saw those cartoons? Yes, I did. Well, I just want you to read about the person they're trying to blaspheme. Because Allah says in the Quran, O oh Muhammad, peace be upon him. You are way beyond everybody else. In your rank, in your status, no matter what anyone does, against you to mock at you to try and make a fool of you they will only be making a fool of themselves they will be mocking at themselves your status is engraved it's already there nothing will change it that's a guarantee of the quran allah tells muhammad وسلم, we have protected your reputation from the mockery of those who want to mock subhanallah when they mocked what happened it destroyed their reputation not muhammad sallallahu more and more people are following him. I want to give you another piece of good news. I don't believe my half an hour is up. <laughs> if it wasn't Jumu'ah, I would have probably lengthened it. But my brothers and sisters, a powerful example I want to give you right now. It makes me shiver when I think my brothers and sisters, do you know the population of the globe at the moment is more than it ever was before? Do you agree? And the population of Muslims on earth who make sujood for Allah is more than it ever was from the beginning of humanity to this day. I promise you, don't lose hope in the mercy of Allah. The deen of Allah is solid. It is strong. Yes, we do have problems. We will manage them by the help of Allah. We do have crises. Do not be despondent. We do have splits. We do have disunity but by the help of Allah if we keep on reminding people of our duties unto one another to speak with each other with respect to be able to react correctly when things go wrong when things don't go the way we'd like them to go then we will definitely be serving the deen there is a lot to hope for look at this masjid my brothers and sisters I want to let you know the masjid is packed to capacity isn't that a sign that we are connected to Allah why lose hope? This is the house of Allah. We are about to put our heads on the ground for Allah. I'm going to put my head on the ground, inshallah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not once, but so many times. Whereas those magicians at the time of the Prophet Musa alayhi salam, they were evil people. But when they turned to the deen and when they made one prostration, not two, not five, one prostration for Allah Allah says we wiped out all their sins granted them Jannah in return if one prostration could wipe out everything they did my brothers and sisters I've made thousands of prostrations may Allah accept at least one so have you so have all of us smile there is hope Allah is Rabbun Ghafoor Allah is most merciful Allah is the most forgiving the most beneficent and I end off with the same statement, my brothers and sisters. Let's learn not to react in a negative way to anything that happens to us. <laughs>